Hi, I'm George and welcome to part eight of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to have a look at these two test pressure chambers that we made to practice construction techniques for the Horizon project and also to see how much pressure they can actually hold. So this bigger one is 80 millimeters in diameter and was designed for the booster. And then the smaller one, which is 60 millimeters in diameter, uh, will be used for the sustainer. So we'll first have a look how these were built and then we'll have a look at some pressure tests that we did to see how much pressure they can actually hold. Okay, so let's get started. These pressure chambers are made from carbon fiber. Now we buy our carbon sleeves from solid composites in the US because they've got a good selection of sizes and weights and also at reasonable prices. We make the pressure chambers in two stages. First, we make an inner liner out of several pieces and then we glue them together. This then gets reinforced with another sleeve. So we cut the sleeve to length first. Here we're prepping the mandrel. This is glad bake baking paper that just helps to separate it from the mandrel. Then we stretch the sleeve over the mandrel. And we tape only one end down. This allows the other end to move and the whole tube to stretch. We're using West Systems Epoxy. Now after that's mixed up, we just pour it onto the dry sleeve and roll it on. And we do this until that sleeve is fully saturated. And here we're just stretching it away from the taped end to make it nice and tight. It then goes onto the rotisserie, uh, just a set of the heat lamps to help it cure faster. And then we just slide it off the mandrel, pull out the baking paper, and it's time to trim the ends. Here we're doing the other pressure chamber. Uh, it's exactly the same process, just a different size mandrel. And again, back onto the rotisserie. And then we trim the ends. Next, we 3D printed these uh, molds and here we're just attaching a steel bolt that makes it a lot easier to handle the mold. We just glued that in place with epoxy, screw it in and then we cut the head off the bolt and just file down the end. We can then put it in a lathe or hold it in a vise while we wrap it. So now we've just sanded it and now we're putting on some polish. Here we're sliding a balloon over the top of it. Uh, this gives us a very nice smooth finish and also helps it separate from the mold. There's actually two balloons on top of each other. So here is the sleeve again. Uh, we've just taped the end uh, to a little 3D printed uh, cylinder that's of the right size. It just helps the end uh, form a lot easier. That just slides over the top of the mold. And again, with the West System Epoxy, we just soak that until we fill all of the gaps. While it's still wet, we wrap it with tape. This helps compress the sleeve. While it's still wet, we stick it back onto our vise. And here we're applying 85 GSM fiberglass over the top. This gives it a much smoother surface uh, and also helps fill in some of those gaps between the weave. And here it is, just sitting ready to be cured. Once it's cured, we remove the tape. And then trim off the excess. 
you can still see it's a little bit soft. It's uh, less than 24 hours after we've laid it up. And here we're just trimming the other end, just cutting straight through that 3D printed part. And here we're just pulling out the balloon to help it separate from the mold. And then you just pull on it and off it slides. And here they're sanded and trimmed, ready to be glued into the cylinder tubes that we made earlier. Give it a nice sand, both inside and out. And then we just put a bit of electrical tape around the edges just to keep the joints nice and clean. So here we're mixing up the West System epoxy again, but this time with uh, Q-cell uh, micro balloons just to thicken it up. Uh, if we just used the epoxy straight, uh, it would run out of the joint very easily. So this creates a nice thick paste. It's about toothpaste consistency. Again, we applied both inside and out. And as you slide it in, you want to make sure there's a bead that's formed around the edge uh, to make sure that the whole surface is covered in glue. And so you push it in slowly, spreading the glue out. And once it's all together, you just remove the excess. Then we place a piece of tape over the top of that just to make the joint nice and clean. And then let it cure. The next day we can remove the tape. And then just brush off the edges and we have a clean joint. Then we machine up some end plugs that will plug the holes in the ends of the brush chamber. These are just scrap off guts that we had. Some were brass, some were aluminium. Here we're cutting a thread and a hole into the end of it so we can hook up the air supply to it. And here we're doing a test fit. And again, we're using the 24 hour epoxy. Again, always both surfaces are covered. And again, you want to make sure that there's a bead running right across the edge as you push it down. And then we let it sit overnight to cure. The next day we hook it up to an air supply. And what we're doing here is checking for any leaks. Uh, checking for leaks at this stage is a lot easier because uh, you can make uh, repairs a lot easier too. So there was a couple of small holes, uh, obviously where the resin hasn't penetrated fully through the fiber. You can hear that uh, it's at an elevated pressure. We only pressurized this to about 40 psi um, so that it's nice and safe. To identify exactly where those leaks are, we submerge it in water. And there's one leak. And so we mark where that is, so that we can later just apply a small patch of fiberglass with more resin. Here is another leak, just a really small one. And one more over here. So once that has been patched, um, what we've done is we've 3D printed these ends that we screw onto the end. And that helps shape the sleeve that goes over the top. Now we sand the entire pressure chamber uh, just to clean it up where the top sleeve is going to attach and we remove the dust with methylated spirits just so it's nice and clean. Now here the sleeve is a much heavier weave and that just slides dry on over the entire pressure chamber. and then we trim it to size.
more West System epoxy. And again, you'll notice the sleeve is loose over the top of it. This allows us to flex the entire sleeve as we pour the epoxy on, making sure that it penetrates as far as it can go. So after it's been fully saturated, we just stretch the sleeve as much as possible to remove any air bubbles. And then we just wire the ends to keep it nice and tight. Stretch it tight and then we also wire the other end. More tape just to compress the sleeve at this point. We do that to both ends and then we apply more epoxy over the surface. And we roll on one layer of 85 GSM fiberglass. Now this provides a nice smooth finish to the outside of the pressure chamber. The ends get the same treatment, just 85 GSM fiberglass to make it nice and smooth. And this gets done to both ends as well. And then you guessed it, back onto the rotisserie. And that'll be there for a couple of hours. The next day, when it's all cured, we can start removing the tape. And we also trim the ends, so we're cutting through the 3D printed tubes that we had at the ends of it. And then we just unscrew it. And we'll go back and clean those ends up. This is the other side. This one was a lot easier to get off and more scrap. So here it is ready for testing. Okay, so let's have a look at the pressure tests. Now we actually performed these tests at Malayli during the launch in May. Since there was a possibility of blowing these up, we first dug a hole in the ground to help contain some of the shrapnel. And before you ask, socks and sandals are standard issue here on the test range. We then filled up the pressure chamber completely with water. Then we attached the high pressure hose at one end. Then we put the pressure chamber in the hole. This was our setup. The rocket box was going to serve as a blast shield that dad was going to hide behind with his steel helmet. The scuba tank was here so you could control it and the pressure gauge was sitting up on the chair. Uh, the pressure chamber was over here in the hole. We had one camera set up to film it side on and the GoPro here to see when anything went boom. We had a third camera set up pointing at the pressure gauge itself. So first up we tested the 60mm sustainer pressure chamber. 300. 400, 500, 600, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We brought the pressure up to 1500 psi and the pressure chamber still held, though it developed a small leak at the neck. We suspected this area may be problematic because the epoxy hadn't quite fully infused into all of the fibers. Even though there was a leak, we were still really happy with the result, as the pressure chamber still held up. The leaks should be relatively easy to fix. Next, it was time to try the 80mm test pressure chamber. Alright, we're going to go again. 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. 1000, 1 1, 1 2. Yes. 
This time, as the pressure came up to 1250 PSI, the aluminium plug in the uh, one end of the pressure chamber came out. At this pressure, there was almost half a ton pushing on it, with the carbon fiber around it trying to expand. This was one of the failure modes we were expecting, so it wasn't too much of a surprise. The final version will not have this type of plug, so we're not too worried. We suspect the plug is somewhere in New Zealand right now. When the pressure chamber released the plug, and you can see it flying off here, the pressure chamber took off and pulled the hose and the pressure gauge off the chair. We did have the hose pinned down to the ground with pegs, but it was like trying to stop a train with a tissue. Unfortunately, we didn't get a wider shot of the pressure chamber flying out. But as far as water rockets go, this was our highest thrust single pressure chamber tethered rocket to date. With a 25 mm nozzle and 1250 psi, it generated a peak thrust of about 7,500 newtons for a split second. So this turned out actually a little stronger than we were expecting, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. If they're a little bit too strong, uh, that means that they're probably also a bit too heavy. Uh, so we're going to have another go at building these uh, with a slightly lighter construction and see how they test. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. And here's some bonus material. Since we didn't blow up the pressure chambers, we decided to blow up a regular two liter bottle instead. For a little more effect, we added some flour over the top. 